Get part one. This is one of those times you better get part one, man. You better get part one. All right, I'm going right in. You better get part one. We're picking it up right here at the pop of uh. The pop of uh. This is the sacred book of the root, the root, the cliche, the root people, the Maya, the people, man. So, translated commentary, Alan Christensen, picking it up right here on page 49. This is part two. We're talking Goliath in the 1100s. We're talking David the Hamashiach. We're talking the cult of Mithra. Let's get it, man. We're going to get back in that Benjamin of the Dula just to connect some of this Hamashiach qualities of our David. Remember, we know. We already know. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. There will be no end. Shepherd forever, Hamashiach. Upon the throne of David and his kingdom, over his kingdom. To order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of Hawa will perform this. The everlasting king who is set upon the throne of David is the Mashiach. Now, this is when they try to tie him into Jesus. Oh, it's God himself. Nah, nah, nah. Dodge the hijack. We're talking about the messenger. We're talking about the shepherd. We're talking about the shepherd. In Hosea 3 and 5, for the children of Israel shall return and abide many days without a king, a prince, and sacrifice, sacred pillar, effort, or teraphim. Afterward, 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 you, my Nagas, my Negroes, my African Americans, the children of Israel shall return. My regal Negro, you shall return. Children of Israel shall return, man. Seek Hawa, their God, their power, and David, their king. So we're not talking about David being God. Dodge all that hijack. We're talking about a covenant between Dawit, Dawit, Lebna Dangle, Dawit. We're talking about David as a title or a function that is forever. They shall respect Hawa and his goodness in the latter days. So this is all we can do to get out this fear spell. Fear, fear, fear comes from Christianity. You being obedient comes from your ancient love song. David, their king. So when you see Kawa, the children of Israel shall return and see Kawa and David, their king. What other scripture tells you that you're going to seek the creator and your Hamashiach? Who? Joshua? Seek the Creator, seek the Creator in Joshua, that's not a scripture. Seek the Creator in Jesus, that's not a scripture. Seek the Creator in Moses, that's not a scripture. Hosea 3, verse 4. Hawa, afterwards the children shall seek Hawa and David. We overstand. Wherever they have gone, wherever you are, my Naga, Hawa will gather you from every side and bring you into your own land. I will make them one nation in the land. Has this happened yet, or is this a prophecy to come, my Naga, on the mountains of Israel? And one king. So we don't have Joshua and Jesus and Moses. One king shall be king over them all, and they shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they be ever be divided into two kingdoms again. Has this happened yet? Or is this prophecy? Do you believe in the creator? Do you believe in the words of the prophets? When, it re 
when it regards something so serious as in Hamashiach. Before you call the Hamashiach something in the New Testament, do you have an overstanding of what a Hamashiach is? Someone that brings us all together on our own land? Has Jesus done that? We're just keeping it trill. This is part two. We're going right in. Joshua did it. And if he already did it, then the Jesus story should pick up right there. With you being united, right? He brought you to your promised land. Kitsukoto brought you to your promised land, right? But this is prophecy, not something that happened already. This is after you return to the creator, you will seek the creator and David, your Khan, Hamashiach. David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgment, observe my statutes, and do them. They shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell there for their children, and their children's children win forever. Has it happened yet? And this prophecy still in play. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Forever. So where do we get off calling another Hamashiach your prince forever? See, there's many, there's many layers to this new test. To the necromancy and the sorcery. It's not just to connect, disconnect you between you and Hawa to get them even open the door to start calling this Hamashiach God or the Creator. <coughs> Jesus is God. Oh, is Joshua God? Is David God? The Creator, the power. But your children's children forever will have this Khan, Hakan, as their priest forever. Forever. So Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel is breaking it down. Jeremiah 30 is breaking it down. That I will bring back my captivity my, from my people Israel and Judah. But they shall serve Hawah their power and David their king. When, when you return to the creator, you will also, I will cause them to return to the land. And I will give their fathers and they shall possess it at last. For that day is great as that great day came. So that none is like them. Why do you have a new test when that day hasn't even come? When this prophecy of David being shepherd forever hasn't even happened yet. When the Most High raises up David, right? Let's go. Wow. Jeremiah 30 and 9. Let's go. But they shall serve Hawah their power. And David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Whom I will raise up for them. No, but Jesus raises. When you think about a prophet raising, you think about Jesus raising. Whom I will raise up for them. Their king, David. David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall all have one shepherd. Where you get this other Hamashiach being your shepherd, your king, right? Because now they have it. You got David's characteristics. I will establish one shepherd over them. Ezekiel 34, 23. David, my servant, shall be king over them. They should have one she shepherd. My servant David will be their con, their prince forever. Man, then you go way, way over here. Oh, is David Jesus? Uh, Jesus is king and shepherd. Oh, okay. That's the excellent new tune we were just digging on, right? I said, that's the excellent new tune we were just digging on in the selling of Joseph, right? Samuel Seawall. Christians should carry it to all the world. What, the excellent new tune? Is that what they did when they came here? Did they carry it to all the world? These conquistadors, as the Israelites were to neighbors and brethren under the rigor of perpetual bondage, papu bull. 
seems to be no proper way of gaining assurance that God has given them spiritual freedom. Our blessed Savior, who's that? Jesus. Oh, Joshua. Oh, Yahweh Shai. All the same people, right? Same story, same people. Stop fronting. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune. So they're giving Jesus, their blessed Savior, all the credit for altering my Naga's ancient 432 love song. 432 brings you together. You bring in Jesus, things are complicated all of a sudden. There's separation all of a sudden. There's war all of a sudden. There's a change of countenance all of a sudden. Because you're in a whole nother spell, an excellent new tune. That your Jesus has altered the measures of all these Ethiopians in America, these Nagas, these Ethiopian Abyssinians in America, as black as you are, seeing that you are the sons and daughters of the first Adam, the brothers and sisters of the last Adam, who populated the world last, Noah, Noah's Ark, let's go, and the offspring of Hawa. They ought to be treated with the respect agreeable. We'll stop bringing them an excellent new tune and stop altering their ancient love song. This is in the 1700s by Samuel Seawall. We got Hosea 3 and 5. You will return out of that spell, my Nagas. You will seek your creator and David, not Joshua, not Jesus, not Moses, David, the priest king. Who is Preston John? Who is the priest king? What's this Papa Vu all about? Right, we got this in part one, so you know, we're just gonna pick it up, man. We just gonna pick it up when we talk Framer and Shaper. She who has born children. Alright. He who has begotten sons. We're talking the heart of the lake, heart of the sea, the Ketso dragon, the sovereign, the green earth, the blue sky, man. And what did this conquistador this father Domenico de Vicio use their quiche names to refer to the God of the Old Testament why is he referring to the, the framer and the shaper or Hawa as the God of the Old Testament so when you're reading the New Test and you read Jesus's words and you're reading the words Lord and God don't say Hawa in reference to the New Testament you're going to have to make certain distinctions. You can't just syncretize and put them all together because that story does not jive with that story. Joshua leading you to the promised land, taking out giants, has nothing to do with what Jesus is talking about. Turning the other cheek, rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar, all power has been given to me under heaven and earth, is not the words of Joshua. It has nothing to do with the Joshua story. Those who think so only hope they connect. But we can't not be giving it to us as a fact because that is a hijack. That's like saying the earth is round as a fact. Or gravity exists as a fact. Or yeah, this story is this story, but none of those stories have anywhere near the same plot points. If that's a continuation, then guess what? You better pick up with... You being on the promised land with your tribe, Joshua has led you to the promised land. All right, now what? You've taken out giants. You've taken out all these nations to get there. Now keep the story going. That's called a continuation. But this energy that's taking you into the Hamashiach over there, taking you away from the what? <laughs> oh, man. Isaiah 9. There is no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. There is no end. There is no end. There will be no end upon the throne of David and his kingdom. No, Jesus got the kingdom. No. Oh, that's the continuation. Looks like somebody threaded the needle. Right in the heart of things. Because even this Domenic, this, this, this Domenico de Vicio. The Spanish friar, father, conquistador, missionary. He, even he said, man, the power that's being called the most frequently mentioned power, the most frequently mentioned gods involved in creation. 
has to do with this pair, this mother, this father, this hawa, this framer, this shaper, and it refers specifically to the God of the Old Testament, the Tanakh, right? The Torah, right? So you can't call that God over there Hawa because that's Framer and Shaper and even they knew and they knew much more than we know today about what's going on with this new test. If you think you know more than them, that's called a uh, delusion of grandeur. It's a delusional spell that you think you know more than who put this thing together than your own enemies on their particular remix. Their excellent new tune. You can't know more about their new tune than they know about their new tune. And their new tune did not refer to the power of the Tanakh. Only the frame and the shaper that they found here refers to the power of the Tanakh. So whatever you bring in outside the Tanakh, it's not of the same power of the frame and the shaper. Domenico de Vizio used their root names to refer to the power of the Tanakh, Old Testament. Now let's go. Because we just talking David. Oh man. Most I say he going to gather you wherever you've gone. That's the moral to the story. Wherever they have gone and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make one nation in the land. David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall all have one shepherd. And they shall all walk in the judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwell. And they shall dwell there, they, their children, and children's children forever. And my servant David, my Naga, shall be their prince forever. Now, do you substitute all that with Jesus because they told you to? Do you discount the prophets because they tell you to? You have one king, one shepherd, one Hamashiach that you're calling on in the end, that you're seeking in the end. Because when you seek for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king or prince, but afterwards the children of Israel shall return and seek. Oh my naga. When you seek, when you seek Hawa and David, your king, oh man, that's the goodness in the latter days. That's the goodness in the latter days. Again, there ain't no script telling you to seek Hawa and Jesus or Joshua or Moses. So you might need to. You know, clear out the cobwebs so we can see what the script is saying about who we're seeking. When we seek Hawa, we naturally seek Preston John, Priest King, King David. We naturally are being connected back with our land again. Returning to our land, gathering us from every side, bringing us to our own land. Following behind Jesus? Nah, man. Now we know we got Hamashiachs that will return, right? I'm sure Joshua will return. I'm sure Elijah will return. I'm sure so many of the prophets will return. But who are we seeking after we seek our Creator? Seek Hawa, their power, and David, their king. In the latter days. I think we're in the latter days. So we need to be clear about who we're seeking. Oh man, we're just talking about let me get it right here, man. The travels of Benjamin and Tadula. So we connected in part one, you know, this Jesus character with this Mithras cult, with this Zeus, with this Amon Ra, Jupiter, many names, right? Many names, right? Basil, many names. We connected a piece here and you know let's get it quickly because we got a lot to talk about. This is part two. You know, you can belly flop all you want, but make sure you get part one to connect it all. So we belly flopping. 
We got this job before. Some of the Jews did not believe in. We're talking about who? David, David, King David, David, who says he's who? King of the Jews because they asked him. The king of Persia, king of Babylon, asked him. Are thou the king of the Jews? To which he made an answer, I am. So he's the king. So call him King David. Of the city of Amaria or Amarica. Alright, studied under the prince of captivity. His die under Eli. Let's go. President of the college of Gian Jacob in the city of Baghdad. So now we're going to connect all this to the 1100s. 1200 just like we're connecting Goliath remember Goliath Love to the family Malak Yataz Zadak on IG man hit me up bro Now these are giants uh, Skeletons they said again The Smithsonian admits this is Smithsonian admits to destruction of thousands of giant human skeletons in the early 1900s because they're hiding a lot and they're really hiding this giant right here, this Goliath, who they're putting at late 11th century. So let's just uh, surf the wave. If they are getting this fictional Jesus character within this well-spread story that's been spread throughout the code of Mithras and, you know, Egypt with Horus and the Immaculate conception the virgin mary the virgin birth isis and all these other connections sybil all these other connections and they're literally taking the story of david and the story of joshua and the story of elijah and all these different things and they're putting different elements into one character to what get you to you know be connected to the story right there's a story there's a heart this heart of this sacrifice for all, but yet thousands of years have gone by, my naga, and you still being crucified today. Jesus took your sins away, but you still transgressing the law today. Most I said the law will be written on your heart. That's when you will stop transgressing. First, you need to get hijacked free. Stop putting any power before your power and stop seeking anything that the Creator never told you to seek in the latter days. Goliath was about nine feet or so, right? And then we got in 2 Samuel, or excuse me, 1 Samuel 17. Same thing. We got Goliath, he was six cubits and a span, which is what? nine feet nine inches okay 11th century is either the time they found this goliath in real time or they're saying this is when it existed in real time or both 1100s man pay attention to the 1100s let's get it let's get it so you got this king david all right let's go some of the Jews believed in him, called him Messiah. When the king of Persia became acquainted with these circumstances, he sent and summoned David, prince forever. He might have magic and stuff. He might have fountains of youth and magical rings and stuff. Who was Prester John? 1100s, Goliath. Let's go. I mean, yo, we just surfing away. Wow, I'm just surfing the way. This is part two. We're gonna hit him like this, man, with a one, two. Let's go. <laughs> We're gonna knock the hijack out with a one and a right cross. Let's go. So they called him Mashiach, right? So we talking about the Hamashiach. Somebody called him Hamashiach, right? Now, we know even in the scripts, not everybody messed with David, right? So, I mean, Judah was divided for a time. Different things were going down. When the king of Persia became acquainted with these circumstances, he summoned David into his presence. The later went without fear, no fear, and when brought before the court, he was asked, Are you the king of the Jews? And he said, I am. Upon this, the king immediately commanded that he should be secured and put into the prison where the captives are kept. 
who are in prison for life. So this David was given a life sentence, which can be the equivalent of death. Keep it on your mind. Situated in the city of Darbar, stand on the banks of Kazel Ozin, and which is beyond the river. Listen, he was in prison for life after a lapse of three days. Uh oh. So he was dead, sentenced to death. He rose in three days when the king sat in council to take advice of his nobles and his officers. David appeared among them. So the king sat in council respecting the Jews who had rebelled against his authority. So he's trying to you know, figure out what to do with these Hebrews that are not listening to the king of Babylon. We're talking Babylonian exilarchs, right? We're talking David Sauslins, right? We're talking priest King Preston John, right? So David appeared among them, having liberated himself from prison without human aid. surfing the wave David king of Israel David HaMelech or high king or HaMashiach they put it at circa to 1042 that's 11th century is it not 11th century king of Israel huh okay Spell this thing, David Slauson. How you spell it? Or is it Sauslin? Something like that. Exilard. Sauslin. There we go. <laughs> I gotta dodge these chemtrails, man. I gotta dodge these chemtrails, man. Hope y'all enjoyed that chemtrail vaccine drive, man. Real talk, we gotta dodge these chemtrails, man. Now this this David, we got the King David, what, 11th century, we just pulled up 1042. Now this one it says estimated before 1302, so sometimes be, sometime before 1300. Now in this story we're talking about, in Benjamin of Tadula, uh, we're talking about the King of Persia, which is Babylon, right, and his 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 deal with this David, right? King, King David, right? This is Exilarch David, which is King David. The Exilarchs are leading them in Babylonian captivity, which is what? Persia, before the 1300s, son of Raja Hiraja Chola II, Emperor of Soli, or Prester John Pandian, father of Exilarch Hasdai of Babylon. These are Israelite kings, brother of Solomon the first. Mm. So his father was also a David. David, David, David being passed down the line, man. And you got this Babylon situation, Persia situation, King David situation, Prester John Pandian situation. Let's go. You dig on it. So he says, Yeah, I'm the king of the Jews. He was put in jail. Then suddenly he comes out in three days. And when the king beheld him, when the king of Persia, he saw David, he said, Who has brought you here? Who has set you free, man? Who's, who set thee at liberty? To which David said, My own wisdom and subtle, su subtle tility, subtility, all right, which is what? Your smarts, man, your, 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 uh, uh, you know what I mean, um, uh, man, what's the word for, um, 
you know, like like knowledge, man. Let's, you know, I want to get this script. Sub subtle subtility. Ain't no point in jiving. What, what does the Webster say? <laughs> Something that is subtle. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> My own crafting is cunning. Discernment. Hmm. So you got wisdom and you got discernment. What did Solomon pray for? He prayed for his mama and discernment. Hmm. It sound like the framer and the shaper to you? Discernment, right? Hijack city. So you got, you know, you hear about the subtle, the subtle serpent, right? Or the crafty or the discerning one. All right, all right. So you got discernment and you got, what do you say? Wisdom, right? My own wisdom. So the king of Persia said, how'd you get here? He said, my own mama, my own wisdom and subtle subtility. Alright, my own discernment. My hawa. For verily I fear neither you nor your servants. The king immediately commanded that he should be seized. And his servants answered and said, We see him not, boss. <laughs> we don't see him no more. What happened to David, man? He disappeared, man. I mean, we're going to get a piece of uh, this, this Preston John situation with the magic mirror again and all that. So you know that. When they speak about this black priest king already in America, this this Negro priest king right here, you see him on the maps over the four corners, and they're using their whole crusades. The, the, the Portuguese are looking for him for 500 years. There's more to it than meets the eye. Yes, there's a fountain of youth. That's what the baptism stuff is all about. Yes, there's a magic mirror and magic rings and magic stones and all that stuff that Thanos and the Avengers is talking about. X-Men and all that. All that is reality, my people. You're under a spell. That's why you seek your creator. When you do, you also seek your priesthood. You seek David so you can be reconnected with your energy, frequency, and vibration that they call magic. The Magi's. So we see him not, they said, and we are aware of his presence only by hearing the sound of his voice. The king was very much astonished at David's exceeding subtlety, who thus addressed him, I now go my own way. So he was invisible. He told everybody, I'm going my own way. I'm out of here. They followed him, right? So he went out, followed by the king and his nobles and servants to the banks of the river. Oh, you thought Jesus walking on water was original, just like that story ain't original. This ain't original. Where David took his shawl, you know, his, his scarf thing, you know what I mean? Spread it upon the water and crossed it thereupon. So he walked on water. He spread his shawl out. He spread his scarf out. And then he did an Aladdin move. and just started walking on on the, on the scarf, on the, on the rug, you know what I mean? <laughs> he walked on water, man. At that moment, he became visible and all the servants of the king saw him cross the river on his shawl. He was pursued by them in boats, but without success. And they all confessed that no magician, all right, it's magic, right? No magician upon earth could equal him. And then they went looking for him, you, can, you know, to try to put him to death and all that. So all confess that no magi upon the earth could equal david what does it say in the script again let's get it uh let's see right here i will establish one shepherd over them and he shall feed them my servant David, he shall feed them and be their shepherd. I, Hawa, will be their power. Amma and Abba, framer and shaper, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, Hawa, have spoken it. Is Hawa a liar? Forever, the children's children, my servant David shall be their prince forever, is the most high line. Does it say Jesus? If it don't say Jesus, why are you saying Jesus? Oh, because you've been given an excellent new tune. Yeah, man, you know, you, 
you got Jesus, the blessed Savior, who altered the measures of the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune. So you're giving us a new tune when you're giving us this Jesus or Yahweh Shai or, or, or another version of Yahshua, you know what I'm saying, who did not physically bring you nowhere. And you die for your sins. You die for transgressing the law like you're doing today. No magician. We see him not, boss. Where did he go? To the banks of the river where he walked on water. <laughs> and they say, look, man, no magician upon the earth could equal him, man. So this is the what? This is the Babylonian captivity, you know, give or take, you know, a hundred years, couple hundred years, or the same time. The Smithsonian's covering up these giants because these giants are leading to Goliath. And Goliath is rocking at about the 11th century. We're just talking David. Oh, man. We're just talking Shambhala. And we talk Shambhala, you know we're talking Cibola. When we talk Cibola, we're talking right here in America, Four Corners. Which is why Presta John is on the map right over Cibola. C-I-B. O-L-A, which is Kalelus, which means the promised land. Thus the Templars, who, whose order was founded in Palestine, 1118, right? We're still at that 11th century, Goliath, David situation, Preston John situation. We're known to have believed secretly in the unity of all bloodlines, races, and the religions to have practiced spiritual techniques, rituals that may bear points of resemblance to ones from Asia, such as the Tibetan Zogo or Zog Khan cult of severed heads. Right. So it is no means possible that the medieval knightly order of Europe, ambitious to extend the domain of Christendom, were aware of and even had certain converts connected with the initiate center of high Asia. Let's get to it. Tomas, Tomas believes he pointed out that in 1184, Wolfram van Etchenbach, a troubadour of a Knight Templar who summarized the Holy Grail legends in the Romance Tutorial, which we still got to dig on, hinted, you know, we're about to get that Press of John popping around here, so, you know, stay tuned, hinted at a spiritual link between the Holy Grail and Asia and described the Grail as a stone. And this stone is called the Grail. Was Etchenbach, Thomas asked, Speaking of Shambhala and the Shintamani stone. You know, what's the Stanos talking about, right? You got to connect all the infinity stones. Magical stones, right? Stopping time, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, all these particular qualities of each stone. In the Meisinger's tale, the hero Parsifal carries the sacred cup or stone to Asia to the kingdom of Tutoro, a priest king who bears a strong resemblance to the phantom emperor of Asia who Christians call Prester John. Oh, the phantom emperor of the Indias, who the Christians call Prester John, who we know as David, and who, like Tutoro, lived for about 500 years. Why does the Portuguese have a monument? Searching for Preston John for 500 years. Man, come on, man. Let's put in Preston John Monument, Portugal. It's going to show you different pictures of this thing. I'm try to get a close up of it. Right, come on, come on. Here we go. I want you to count this, man. They say he lived 500 years. I want you to count this.
you know, we could be talking about the same timeline, 1145 is, 1645, but they've searched for Preston John for a period of time. 500 years here, we know the Preston, you know, he and his uh, tribe took six baths in the Fountain of Youth, each time turned back to the age of 32, you know, all these things have been going on that would extend him and being an immortal situation, an immortal situation. Prince forever. David shall be their prince forever. Okay. Uh, we got David walking on water here. Okay. Uh, he has a ring, you know, goes invisible. Okay. We got this Preston John. Like Shambhala, the mythical kingdom of Preston John was a country full of marvels. It was said to lie in the Gobi Desert to possess a fountain of external youth from which all the inhabitants could drink, thus banishing sickness and old age. Only the purest souls could live in Preston John's land. Why did Hawa keep telling us the children of Israel will return, seek Hawa and David their king? Does that have anything to do with your land? Anything to do with your covenant to connect to your land? Is it play play? Because David is shepherd forever. We're just talking about fountain of youth, external youth, from which all the inhabitants can drink, thus banishing sickness and old age. Only the purest souls could live in Preston John's land where crime, poverty, and justice were unknown. A magic mirror enabled the king to observe everything that happened in the world. Flying dragons, my naga. Oh, you didn't think this was dragon drop? We're talking angels. We're talking seraph. Flying dragons carried men for long distances through the air. And a magic ring could make them invisible. A magic ring could make David invisible? Wait a minute. Who brought you here? Who set you free? My own wisdom and subtlety. Framer and shaper. The king told him to be seized, but his servant said... We cannot see him and are aware of his presence only by hearing the sound of his voice. David went invisible. He had anything to do with his rain? Because then he hit the banks of the river where he walked on water. And then at that moment, he became visible just so that they can see. You know what I mean? He, he just had to stun on them right quick. Yeah, I'm still here. Peace. They crossed the river. He crossed the river on his shawl. Pursued, they pursued him in boats, but without success, man. He was out of there. He was out of there. Because he went invisible. Because Preston John got the magic mirror. He got the flying dragons. He got the fountain of youth. And he got the magic ring that could make him invisible. Are we just talking 1100s? 11th century? Before 1300s? Because this Preston John connects to another Preston John. Now we got Preston John, Raja here, Raja Jadaran. They don't even put a date on him. They don't even put a date on him. Death, we don't know. Death, we don't know. Death, what do you mean? <laughs> it's the eternal fountain of youth, baby. We just looking for the priest king, Preston John. Then they found you. Then they gave you an excellent new tune. Right? They blessed say their blessed savior gave you. They altered the measures of your ancient love song and set it to a most high excellent new tune. Oh man, now when we say Hamashiach, we're talking this Jesus. But what's what what's Jesus talking about? Just a bunch of talk. What did he do? Oh, he died for us, man. He's the perfection of the law, man. These talking points, these talking points have been regurgitated. When you talk E is Zeus again, you rocking with Jesus, then drop the J and say you rock with E is Zeus. And now we're talking, right? Now we're talking. Let's, let's, let's keep connecting this Mithras. You got all the links, pull them up. This is for you. Mithras and Jesus. On the nature and origins of modern pagan parallels, we're going to get a piece of this. Hey, you got the water. Let's go.
It is chiefly in the religion of Mithras or the God's son, right? God's son, God's son, God's son. Who's the son? Now, now we got you talking about the son of God. When you are the firstborn. Israel's the firstborn. Even David is called firstborn. Worshipped under that name of the Magi. We're just talking the Magi's, right? The magicians, right? <laughs> And that we find most mostly features, those features of analogy with the death and resurrections of Christ and with the mysteries of the Christians. Mithras was also born on the 25th of December like Christ and Zeus. We'll get that next. Died as he did and he had his scepter over which his disciples came to shed tears during the night. The priest carried his image to the tomb. This is Mithras, not Christ. This is a different Christ. Expressively prepared for him he was laid out on a litter like the Phoenician Adonis these funeral ceremonies like those on Good Friday were accompanied with funeral dirges and the groans of his priests after having spent some time with these expressions of feigned grief after having lighted the sacred flambeau or their partial candle and anointed the image of the chrism and or perfumes one of them came forward and pronounced with the gravest mien these words be of good cheer sacred band of the initiates your god has risen from the dead his pains and his suffering shall be your salvation this is mithras people don't talk about christ being our salvation today don't bring christ to these indians man it is true he explains on this conformity which exists between these two religions by asserting as Tertullian and St. Justin did that a long time before there were Christians in existence, the devil had taken pleasure to have their future mysteries and ceremonies copied by his worshippers. This may be an excellent reason for certain Christians such as there are plenty in our days, but an extreme paltry one for men of common sense. As far as we are concerned, we who do not believe in the devil and who are not like them in his secrets we shall simply observe that the religion of Christ founded like all the others on the worship of the Son Ra Amen Aman has preserved the same dogmas the same practices the same mysteries or very nearly so that everything has been in common because the God was the same <laughs> that there were only the accessories which could differ but that the basis was absolutely the same. The oldest apologists of the Christian religion agree that the Mithraic re religion had its sacraments, its baptism, its penit penitence, its Eucharist, and all its consecration by mystical words that the catechumens, ca catechumens of that religion had prepared, had preparatory or purport, pre preparatory trials most rigorous than those of the Christian so it's all giving you a basis for what these orthodoxies are coming out with and the story that they canonize so you can't bring the same story to your brothers saying that it's a continuation or that one thing connects with another that means that you're syncretizing all this with the code of Mithras with this Ra situation with this this Isis Osiris situation with Zeus Mithras had a virgin birth Visited by Magi, died on a cross or hung on a tree, had 12 disciples, and on and on. I mean, that's just Mithras, man. That's just Mithras, man. Maybe we tripping. Maybe we tripping. Because we also talking Zeus, right? So that's why I said, drop the J and you're left with your E is Zeus, your hell Zeus. So you can see it as something else or you can see it as E is Zeus. All right? It's up to you. Because at the end of the day... You gonna, we gonna believe whatever we want to believe. Our people, our sisters, our brothers are gonna believe whatever they want to believe. If they want to connect this with that, with this and that, they're gonna do that. But there is gonna be a time when you gotta see clearly, and there's gonna be nowhere else to go. And that's all we're talking about here. Now we got the name Jesus, four hundred years old approximately. All right, because the English language, the English language never had a J till then. I'm talking to 1600s from this very important point <laughs> you know you in an illusion every time you're saying jesus so drop the j 
and just say, is Zeus. No, I can't do that. That's too real. I need to go to the Hebrew. Yahweh Shai. No, that's a different Joshua. But those two stories are the same. Prove it. This is very important because it says in the Bible, by one name only shall you be saved. <laughs> that's what it says in the New Testament. Even though we know Isaiah 42, Isaiah 43 says, there is no other Savior but me, but the Creator. I, only I am your Savior, right? Yeah, man. So it becomes frightfully important because it is the recent name known by Almighty. In fact, the original King James Version had the name Jesus inside. <laughs> this is also a historical record of the fact that the name Jesus is very modern. Then on the flip side, on the subject, we have the Greek god Zeus, who is a reputation of the sun god, who is the devil, as known by ancient cultures. Who else would call this confusion? Cause this confusion? Here below is some information on the subject, but take into account no name beginning with the letter J can be attributed to the Almighty. So the name Jehovah cannot be the name the Almighty of Jeshua. We have a clue to the name of the Almighty from the scripture of the word hallelujah, which means praise Yah, so Yah is his name. Well, we went further, obviously, and we got the Hawa out of the out of the real spill. Let's keep going. Alright, so it goes into all that. Let's get it from here. Let's get it from here. I E equals hell. Zeus or Zeus. Zeus. So E is Zeus. There's an easy breakdown because we're just talking Greek. Don't forget that you speak in Greek. When we start breaking down the Greek, you want to get out of that and go to the Hebrew. You're speaking Greek. So when you say Jesus, it's breaking down to hell, Zeus. E is Zeus. That's Greek, Zeus. Some authors who have spent their entire lives studying the origins of the names believe that Jesus actually means Hail Zeus. For E is Zeus in Greek is Hail Zeus. For E is Zeus in Greek is Hail Zeus. So I know you can break it down into the Isus and these other, you know what I'm saying, general terminologies of these high level. Uh, you know, prophets or priests or Mashiachs. But you're speaking Greek. You're speaking Greek. And one prophet ain't the same as everybody's prophet. Some people call their prophets Baals or Baals or Baals, right? So is that prophet pure water because someone's calling him a prophet? Is that Isu pure water because someone's calling it an Isu like an Oasbi? Well, we're speaking Greek. For Jesus in Greek is Hell Zeus. That's why you're not comfortable saying Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Is my Hamashiach. You got to say Jesus because it comes with a different spell with that J. Now you feel good when you say that. But you don't feel good when you say Jesus. That, that makes you jump into the Hebrew. Yahawashah. I mean, I mean, I mean, Yahawashah. Come on, man. We all see clearly. We all know and we all see clearly that David shall be prince forever, that they shall have one shepherd in the latter days. I will establish one shepherd over them. Kill the confusion. Israel has one shepherd. Kill the confusion. Hosea 3 and 5. You will seek your creator. Israel shall return. Seek Hawa and David, not Joshua, definitely not Jesus or Hell Zeus. And this is why they had the same birthday, the same story. Mithras, Zeus, Osiris. Bring it back to Atlantis, shall you? The English name Jesus, therefore, stems etymologically from Jupiter Zeus. The English name Jesus stems etymologically from Jupiter Zeus. Do you want to ignore this? The chief god of the ancient Greek Olympus, Yeshua or Jesus, which Biblical Research Institute 1996, that's from Les Aaron Gosling. Jesus is a transliteration of a Latin name, Eosus, Eosus, pronounced Jesus, Jesus. 
which means nothing in Hebrew. Oh man, Jesus and Joshua is the same thing. I think you're stretching. Because some part of us sometimes want to connect with some hijack. Because maybe that makes other hijacks feel better. Maybe that makes, uh, you know, maybe that makes you feel better around other people who are hijacked. For you to truly believe that Jesus and Joshua are the same names when Jesus, <laughs> what does it say, means nothing in Hebrew. But in Latin, it means hell Zeus. Hey, Zeus. So you're, you're comfortable bringing us Jesus, but you don't want to say Jesus. You don't want to say Jesus, but you like saying the name Jesus. When there's no J, he might be in the mind of a hijack. You got to bring us Christ and not Hamashiach. Because your Hamashiach is Zeus. Hell, Zeus. 440, which is a what? Excellent new tune altered the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune. So what's the new tune about? Is it about your latter days? Is it about David, your shepherd? Or is it about Jesus? Hail Zeus. If Yeshua's name has been translated into our language, it would have been closer to Joshua or Yehoshua. Winds of Winds of praise, broadcasting, believer, or follower. That's from John Thompson. So there's a different, you know what I'm saying? Research is breaking down his name. Christ never did hear himself being called by that name, Jesus. So why even offend Joshua by calling him a frequency he's never called himself or even heard or approved or anything? But, but nah, you got to form a bridge between those that do. That's called syncretinizing. That's called hijacking your ancient love song with an excellent new tune so that now your bridge is cozy for Christians. It is known that Greek name endings with Zeus or Zeus or Zeus, which are phonetic pronunciations for the chief Greek god of the Olympus, were attached by the Greeks to names and to geographical areas as means to give honor to their supreme deity, Zeus. Oh, look like a black man, huh? That's right. All of Egypt's deities were black men or black sisters, right? So don't let the melanin throw you off. Oh, look at my black Hawashua. Look at my black Yahawashai. That's that's the Zeus, the black Zeus. That's the same Ra. That's the same Amon. That's the same situation. That's the same Mithra. Sun God, Greek sun God, Zeus. Jesus was the name given to him by the early church many years after his death. They wanted to remove any Jewishness from the new church. And they did a lot more. They gave him a new name, gave him a new story, and gave him a what? Excellent new tune. We're not tuned into that frequency, nor do we need it today in 2019. And in the latter days, when we are seeking Hawa, we are seeking Hawa, our power, and David our king, our shepherd, our one shepherd, our priest king, our prester. Let's not make it confusing, my people. This is for the real ones. This is for the tribe. So that we're not confused by anyone bringing this to us, nor are we confused when we are digging and getting the drop and getting the babies out. Who is shepherd forever? Who does the script say is shepherd forever? Who does the script say that you're going to seek after you seek your creator? You will seek Dawit. Does that mean anything to do with the fountain of youth for you, the purest souls and the land, the flying dragons resonating? Do these dragons resonate with Jesus? Let's go, man. So you got that link. You connected, man. You can also get this link here. Committee to disclose the world's greatest secret. We got this. Uh, or we got, you know, something like this, the authority or true authorship of the New Testament. You can get that in the drop library. You can get this link as well. Compare them. The New Testament was written by Arius Copernicus Piso. He had three sons, Julius, Fabius, and Justice, Fabius Justice, and Proculus, Proculus, 
with additional help from Pizzo's granddaughter's husband, Pliny the Younger. Hmm, you heard about Pliny the Elder, you got Pliny the Younger. Piso deliberately created hatred towards Jews because the Judean religious leaders refused to accept his fraud. He and his family provoked three separate Judean revolts in order to slaughter millions of them. The Piso family used the Christian writings to inflict hatred against the surviving Jews. They used this hijack. They used the hijack to bring you a what? Excellent new tune. What happened to your ancient love song? They're using our blessed savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song. They're using Zeus to alter the measures of the ancient indigenous love song to bring you a new, new, new tune. Which all ought to be ambitious of learning. All hijacks should learn this, right? This is where our, our family needs to be, right? Hey, they told us it. You're telling us it. You seem to all agree. But we're Zeus free. We're hell Zeus free. We're Jesus free. We choose our real Yahweh Shai or Yeshua. We choose the real J Joshua, son of Miriam. We choose the real Kitsukoto. That has everything to do with literally getting your land back, not talking about it. That stood toe to toe with the hijack, giants and all. Didn't just talk about it. What are you talking? David or Joshua? They still went toe to toe with giants. Jesus ain't even talking about that. So how can it be the same story? I mean, this is real spill, my people. This is where we're at. So this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Who was Aries Copernicus Piso? You get the rest of this. It says, who... Piso was in his family background is covered in the booklet, The True Authorship of the New Testament. Get that right now in the Drop Library. Password is 1234 to get through the door at 432 com. Let's go, which you can download and study. Piso wrote under many pen names in order to conceal his identity. Some of these names are Flavius, Josephus, Plutarch, and Manetho. Don't they give Manetho a lot of credit for this Egyptian drop, right? Now you got Josephus, you could also call him Paul. All these names are, you know, possibly very synonymous when you dig on them. Flavius Josephus, Paul, Arius Piso, Marco Polo. Love the tie battle. We've got some great drop connecting Paul to Marco Polo, which when you put it all together, he's writing under Genghis Khan, right? You got Josephus writing under Vespasian, Titus, and all that put the stories together. This is what Fermanco told you. They changed the kings, they changed the names, they changed the places, but it's the same story. That situation that happened in 70 AD, tearing down the Temple of Jerusalem, uh, the Second Temple, it's the same thing they did in the 1400s. 1400s is 70 AD. You could look at it like that, but you dig on it and keep digging. The first reference book to start reading is this true authorship of the New Testament by Abelard Ruchlin. All right. This book will give you the basics of who wrote the New Testament books and when they were written and the code systems used within the New Testament. It has a good description of who the writers were and their relationships. The book is the first time in history anyone has written about the piece so openly since its publication. No one has disproved its thesis that the Pisos wrote the New Testament. And you can skip over this if you want, but if you can't disprove it, you might want to dig on it. The next book that Mr. Ruchlin wrote was a continuation of the true authorship of the New Testament. Pisos further writing, writings, volumes one and two. All right, you got the Piso compilation of the New Testament, Piso and Arian's creation of wisdom literature, the creation of the Septuagint, Greek translation, and then existing Hebrew Bible, the Apocrypha. The next is the excerpt from the volume number two, so it goes on and on. Then you got some more proofs that Piso created the name and concept of Satan. My goodness. My goodness. Examples of Europeans and Arabs' hatred towards Jews and Israel, so everyone is what? Working together. Uh, they're going to who owns the land. Well, we already got the drop on that. And more and more. So this Piso family had a lot to do 
with the authorship of what we're getting with the stories and what did they do as authors or the original authors or did they tie it all together put it all together remember the fraud man the protocols of the elders of zion and how it all connects how this all comes together it's a confederacy they're all working together the jesus story or its stepchild the quran are still being used for hatred and murder against negroes man nagas man not jewish we're talking the hebrews we're talking the indigenous americans so when you bring us the quran when you bring us this new test situation when you bring us all this hijack you're still at war against our people and that's hijack city you might not want to bring war against us you might think you got some drop but you need to dig on it because it's a what excellent new tune and it's not coming in the same frequency of our ancient love song and you cannot connect that Joshua with that Joshua and have the same story and have no continuation or a continuous flow even if you're looking for it. it's a new tune you're not connected no more this is really the the proof pudding once you start connecting with that you don't even care about the Hamashiach David that the Most High is telling you over and over again in the latter days is shepherd forever David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall dwell in the land I've given to Jacob, my servant. My servant David shall be their prince forever. All that's out the window. Hamashiach, Jesus. Hamashiach, Yahweh. You throw away all that to try to hope to have some connection. When in reality, there is one shepherd. One shepherd. I will establish one shepherd over them. There is no confusion. And he shall feed them, my servant David. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. Jesus? No. Nah. Dawit, Prester, Priest King. You know Priest King, you know the one with the fountain of youth. Magic mirror, flying dragons, magic ring, makes them invisible. Oh, it's a myth, right? It's a myth. All right, so you... You take that as a myth, and you jump right into the Mithras. One, one, one's a myth, right? And then you, you, you make a covenant with Mithras. And now you got all this Mithraism popping off in your story as you're quoting this story. And this is what our brothers are bringing us. This is what the frequency is that we got to dodge, man. And this is what we all got to see clearly and have a unified flow. So there ain't no separation and there ain't no confusion. When we talk David, we know we're talking one shepherd over them forever. When we talk Hosea 3, we know we're talking seeking Hawa and David, our Khan, our Khan, our Mashiach. It's real simple when we focused. And this drop right here, man, is to remember, man. It's the third wave, fourth quarter. We got to be focused, man. It's all happening. It's all happening, man. So we got a piece of that and a piece of this, man. All right. All right, cool, man. I'm going to fall back. Let me see. I got everything I want. Yeah, man. This is drop that I'm going to feature right here, man. It's, it's straight hijack city. Uh, but even the hijacks are going to reveal the drop <laughs> sometimes when you're listening. And this has to do with Atlantis. It's in America. I'm making sure I got everything I wanted, man. Remember, man, they've been searching. They've been searching. What do you think they're searching for? What do you think they're seeking? Right? When the Most High says, Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek Hawa, their power, and David, their king. They're seeking David. They're seeking David. They're searching for Prester John. They're searching for your priest king. These indigenous people were rocking with David. Don't bring them Jesus. They're rocking with David. We're rocking with David. And let's get it right here. Because this hijack right here is going to tell you straight up and straight down that Jesus is Zeus. And he's going to try to say, look, man, Zeus is so great. It's the same thing. And he's going to try to bang on the creator who he calls, uh, 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 you know, some other version of, you know, 
Yahoo or something like that. All right, so he's going to bang on him. He's going to tell you Kitsukoto's returning, which is Joshua, who the Mormons are calling Jesus. <laughs> but you follow the breadcrumbs, man. You get right back to your indigenous drop. And then we start putting it together. Are these stories rocking very, you know, similar at the same time with this David and this Joshua? Is Joshua the cousin of David? As Preston John, is John the Baptist the cousin of Jesus? You see how they put it together? Joshua, the son of Miriam, as the Quran is putting together. It's all one thing, and it's all happening, and it's all happening recently. So let's fall back and see what this hijack got to say. And, you know, we'll, we'll just try to let it rock, but boy, boy. Is he going to come with some of that wing wham? You know what I mean? But I do like how he ties some of this Atlantis drop together and this American indigenous drop. But man, let's fall back, man. All right, suit up. I'm going to tell you right now, suit up, man. And still, I'm still using your drop, man. I appreciate you, David Vos, Vosse, something like that. It's all good, man. Fair use, fair use. Let's get it. Just not your time to wake up, man. You're not ready. But you will wake up one day, my friends. All of you will, at some time or another, come out of the delusion and all of this mythology and all of these ceremonies, and you will wake up. You will return and see Kawa and David. Look at the last prophet of the greater prophets that came to this earth was Joseph Smith. Joseph. All right, man. So you see where he's going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it rock. But the last great prophet is Joseph Smith. Is that your prophet? Just like the uh, the Moors, right? The Moabites say noble Joel is their prophet, but is that Israel's prophet? Has Israel ever had a prophet outside of Israel? Then how could you as Israel have Joseph Smith as your prophet? So they're using these words and terms. You see he's hijacked like a mug. But let's go, man. Smith wrote a book called The Book of Mormon. It teaches that the Native Americans are the true children of Israel. One more time. This earth was Joseph Smith. Uh -huh. Joseph Smith wrote a book called The Book of Mormon. It teaches that the Native Americans are the true children of Israel. And he said that this was the... Got it, got it. I got you, I got you, I got you. I'm just saying, he just said that their prophet, right? Joseph Smith, right? Oh, yeah, we're just talking meteors, man. You know what I'm saying? We're just talking meteors, man. <laughs> we're talking Kitsukoto, right? We're talking the American, right? And, you know, this might be your first time. 1828 Webster Dictionary, the actual definition of American in the first compilation that these hijacks put together, you know what I'm saying, after the 1776 hijack right there, they got this 1828 Dictionary, and in it they say a native of America originally applied, originally applied to the originals or the copper colored races, you Negro people. Look at Grandma's Penny and look at you. Same complexion. Copper color races. Not white people. Not Asian people. Not, uh, you know what I'm saying, Asian looking Native American people. We're talking about the Negroes, the niggas, the copper color races that are found here by the European. So when he just said what he just said, the Native Americans or the American copper color race are the Israelites, that's a body bag. That's going to carry throughout all the wing wham he's talking right there. He just body bagged himself because he don't know who he's talking about. He don't know really what he's talking about, but he does tie a couple things together, which I think might be on accident, but he is going to tell you who Jesus is. Let's go. Come out of the delusion and all of this mythology and all of these ceremonies and you will wake up. Look at the last prophet of the greater prophets that came to this earth was Joseph Smith. Hi, Jack. Joseph Smith wrote a book called The Book of Mormon. It teaches that the Native Americans are the true children of Israel. So the copper color races found here by the European are the actual Israelites that were just found in the promised land, Kalelus. And he said that this was the land that Adam dwelt. Mm. This was the great Atlantis. This was the promised land uh -huh. that's been preserved for thousands of years. They had no king, no emperor. And uh, <laughs> here we go with this hijack again. We know that King David was rocking right here. We know Preston John was rocking right here. Let's go. And it was waiting over here and being preserved for the latter days 
for the new Jerusalem and for the coming again of the great eagle, of the coming again of the great rising of Enoch, which is the great city of Enoch or the phoenix, the great city of Atlantis, which is the remnant of the righteous who were taken from Atlantis before it fell and was flooded by the great flood that the Bible talks about and the Sumerian scriptures talk about, the Babylonian scriptures talk about, and the Egyptian scriptures talk about. So the original headquarters of Christ was here in America. Ah, <laughs> that's not what no one's saying, man. Maybe that's what Joseph Smith was saying. But remember, they called Jesus Kitsukoto, right? Who is the dragon king, right? Who is the rainbow dragon with the rainbow covenant? I'll make a bow in the sky, rainbow. So we know where they're getting this essence from, right? We know we, they're getting it from our Joshua, who is indigenous right here, where all the wars went down, because this is the old world. So just keep all that together. Let's go. And then it degraded into these various kingdoms of the world. The first kingdom that sprouted up after the flood was the kingdom of Egypt. And that was the first world empire that rose after the flood. So the te even Thoth told us this, right? In the halls of Amente, he hopped in a he hopped in a ship with the dweller. They went over there with the hairy barbarians, all that. So he's telling us he's setting up that Egypt over there, but that's after this Egypt had already fell or Atlantis. Kings of Hold up, man. Hijack City. Oh man, Hijack City, man. Hijack City. Enoch, or the teachings of the phoenix bird, the god Quetzalcoatl, uh, the feathered serpent, Thoth, hmm. Ninning Sita, teachings of the great eagle that taught. Don't try to tie Thoth in with the kids of Cold or the feathered serpent. Some people try. We know there's multiple titles. We know that this title of Kitsukoto was used even with our enemies, even with Thoth. So dodge all that hijack. We're talking Joshua. Taught the wisdom of Enoch. And to the Greeks, he's Hermes. And to the Latins, he's Mercury. So this particular God is going to come again. His promise to come again. Whoa, whoa, let's get that part back. Third serpent, Thoth, Ninning Sita. Teachings of the great eagle that taught the wisdom of Enoch. And to the Greeks, he's Hermes. And to the Latins, he's Mercury. So, this so these are all the names of Thoth, right? Hermes, Mercury, right? All these things. We even have another Enoch, right? All that. Uh-huh. So he's already telling you who he's rocking with and where he's going with this. He's, he, he's rocking with Thoth returning. Even Thoth says he's going to return him. So, hey, he's rocking with that return. Right, he's rocking with the return of Thoth. He's even rocking with Zeus. And he's gonna put all that together into a giant gumbo of Jesus. Let's go. This particular God is gonna come again. His promise to come again and reign over the world in righteousness. And this is actually all over the scriptures. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 18 tells you where Zion is. And it says it's beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. And basically, if you read that very carefully, you'll see that it's talking about the gates of Gibraltar beyond the Atlantic Ocean. Well, that's where Atlantis was. That's where Plato says that Atlantis was. Atlanta is also where we get the word Atali, Italy. So it's beyond Italy. See, Atlas is the Greek god that we get the word Italy or Atlantis because he's holding up the world at the gates of Gibraltar over there west of Morocco there's a gate that goes out into the Atlantic Ocean and so this was the gate to the original home of the gods according to Isaiah chapter 18 that is where Zion is and that's where the remnant will return and <laughs> he's just putting a lot of stuff uh, he's just throwing a lot of stuff in one pot Isaiah 18 ain't telling you that Zion is right here. Across the rivers of Ethiopia, we have many rivers across of Ethiopia that's connected to where Zion is, man. I mean, all right, man, go ahead. Let's go. Let's go. And in Isaiah chapter 19, it actually talks about the Great Pyramid there. And it says that it's the monument or a pillar to the Lord. 
and it is at the center of Egypt and at the border thereof. And that actually refers to the southern and northern kingdoms of Egypt. It's right there. Where's Egypt? Is that little piece over here called Egypt? Or bondage? When Atlantis is over here? Must you go over there to say that's Egypt? Or oh, that must be connected to that pillar or that pyramid must connect to that. You're in my vibe, Jack. Let's keep rocking. But we know that Egypt is over here. We know that Zion is over here. We got all that drop. But I'm just playing this back from this point so you can see where he's going. So when he brings it home with this Jesus drop, you already, you know, got the drop on, you know, what he's lifting up. He's talking Thoth returning and how great that's going to be and how that's all throughout script and all this stuff like that. Madness, man. You know what I mean, but maybe he got something to tell us, man. Let's go. They're on the border of the northern and the southern kingdoms of Egypt in the center of all of greater Egypt. So it pinpoints where this altar was. It was always called, this great pyramid was always called the Pillar of Enoch. And it was with the Pillar of Enoch because, you see, Enoch was in America and that was Atlantis, and, and so he was the one that brought the mysteries. They wrote the mysteries down in the Great Pyramid, in the ancient esoteric wisdom. And then there were certain individuals after the flood, after we'd gone down in the bottom of the wheel, and we'd gone into the darkness of the night, and we had to learn by the things in which we suffered. We all incarnated into this world, waiting for the Christ to arise again on the horizon. It's all there in the scriptures. In Psalms 19, verse 5, it says that in the sky, the Lord sets a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom. The sun is the bridegroom. That's S-U-N, friends. The sun is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. He's going. So you see, he's putting it, you know, he's going to hit you with that rodenism and then thoughtism, right? So... He's putting the sun, like the son of God, Jesus, with the S-U in, right in front of your face. Let's go. Going forth from the end of the heaven and his circuit under the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And Psalms 102, verse 16, talks about the Lord shall appear in glory when he comes to rebuild Zion. And all the way through, it talks about this Zion in the regions on the opposite end of the earth. That Hebrew word there, sometimes it uses the expression the ends of the earth or the remote parts of the earth. And it's really talking about the opposite side of the earth. So the opposite side of the earth from the Middle East, of course, is America. Right, so Zion on the opposite side is in America. But he just said before that this Zion is over there and, and you know, where the pillars and Gibraltar is and around that area. So... Which one is it, man? Which one is it? We got to keep it clear. And that's where he's going to build up Zion. Notice he's going to rebuild Zion. Zion shall return again. But you see, it's not talking about some hill that David conquered, you know, in Jerusalem there in the Old Testament. It's talking about ancient times from the days of long ago. The Zion that it's talking about is the Zion of Enoch before the flood. So that's showing the separation as if David Zion is over there on the other side of the world and this Zion is over here when we know that David's over here. So he's not putting none of this drop together about David being here and that this is the old world. He's saying it's the old world, but then he's putting the biblical story over there. How can you keep putting the biblical story over there, but then you say that Enoch is over here, but then David, his Zion is over there. Where's, where's the story taking place? Over there, over here. And if it's over here, then this David Zion is the ancient Zion, and Atlantis is not Zion. Uh, Atlantis was a, you know, hijacked, man-made islands and all kind of other stuff, and that's why it was destroyed. You know what I'm saying? The land that's still, you know, that's still visible is still connected to, you know, a lot of that land under the, under the waters, and the man-made stuff, you know, has been destroyed. So, this is, all returning has nothing to do with just lands popping up. It has to turn, it has to deal with you returning to your power, to your shepherd, to your creator, you know what I'm saying, to your energy, which is right here. Now, what else are we going to be digging on? Going to bring healing in his wings. See, the rise of the sun on the horizon 
was the time when Christ died and was resurrected. And now we're in the dawn of this new civilization. And it's been 2,000 years. And the next age that arrives is going to be the age of Christ and the kingdom of our Father, friends. And where does it say that? The next age that arrives will be the kingdom of Christ. Do you have to bring us to the New Testament to get that drop? Are you going to bring it to us anywhere in our Tanakh? Or is he going to keep demonizing the Tanakh, demonizing the Creator, and telling you to rock with Jesus and Zeus instead? Listen up. So what we want to do is go back to the days of Enoch, to the time when men lived a thousand years. And remember, it says that Enoch was taken. Well, what really happened, friends, we're not going to go into that in this video, but it wasn't just one man. If you read Jasher and some of the ancient Apocrypha, you'll find that when he left the earth, he took with him the righteous. That's why in our Bibles, in the New Testament, it talks about the saints shall come down with Christ and there'll be this great wedding. We'll meet him in the air with all the saints. So the saints is that church, the 140 and 4,000 that are on Mount Zion with Christ. And that is the great city that's going to come down out of heaven. There's 144,000 stones that make up that city. And that is the city of... Now notice, all this is coming out the New Testament, my people. Check with the pesos. All this is coming out the New Testament. Benoch. And that is the saints. And so that is where we go when we die. And we've passed over from death unto life. And we go to the city or the organization where the angels are, where the tree of life is, where in the Sumerian stories, Anu, our father in heaven, is there. And that's going to come down out of heaven to the earth. And so the story of Quetzalcoatl is the story of Christ, who has come to all nations and give them all a testimony of his love. How dare you put that excellent new tune on Quetzalcoatl, on Hawashua. Come to all nations with his love. <laughs> he came to the... Didn't, didn't even Jesus say I came only... I, I only came... I only came for the tribes of Israel. Jesus... Jesus literally said that, right? <laughs> and this is where the... Man, this is where the hijack is just hijack city. It's like... You can't even just stick with that. You're going to have to throw that... You got you to gotta throw that away to get to this. It's where in the Sumerian stories, Anu, our father in heaven, is there. And that's going to come down out of heaven to the earth. And so the story of Quetzalcoatl is the story of Christ, who has come to all nations and give them all a testimony of his love. When? Where? When he said out of his mouth, right? He said out of his mouth, I only came for the, tribes of, for the lost tribes of Israel. I ain't going to throw the children's meat. To the dogs, right? To the dogs, right? To the dogs, right? Now you have the dogs speaking up saying, I see you came from everybody, you know, da 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 Oh, man. It's how my Shiite business gets a little tricky when you syncretinize the stories. And he told them, I will come again. And friends, he's here. Hmm. It is love. It is the Christ within you. He's here. Hmm. Wake up and recognize Christ because he's right now standing at the door and anyone who will open the door and let him in, he will come and have supper with you. We are. What scripture is this? Anyone who lets, who, who, who will let in Christ, he will come have supper with you. And here we go. Here we go. This is their depiction of he is Zeus. Oh, open up. You let me in. I'm going to come have supper with you. We're at the brink of that coming new age. And this is indeed the last days of the old wicked age that we've been living through. And so you go down and you see the man, which is January or Ioannis. This is the fish because mm. this is the part of the wheel that's all water. You got Pisces down there and Aquarius. And so... Jesus said when he was on the earth, you know, this one's going to decrease and I'm going to increase. See, January's over, the winter's gone, and Jesus was going to rise on the horizon. See, that was Aries, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. 
Why is it a lamb that's going to take away the sins of the world? How come in the book of Revelation, one of these beasts looks like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon? <laughs> See, all of these things are symbolic of these astrological ages. So the lamb comes to take away the sin of the world because that's Aries. It rides on the horizon and it with, comes with healing in its wings. And the sun Aries. Now you look it up. You look it up. You do the homework. What's the connection between Aries and Zeus? You look it up. Let's go. Sunshine and the brightness of the day and love and goodness and prosperity. See, this is the kingdom of heaven. And who rules up there in heaven? Oh, man. Well, the bull, Taurus. Who is the bull? Huh? So he's bringing you into the bulls, man. The bulls, man. I trust you, man, but just for those that are lazy, what's the connection between Ares and Zeus? Ares is a Greek god of war. He is one of the 12 Olympians, or 12 disciples. <laughs> the son of Zeus and Hera. Got it. Got it. Got him. You bringing a Zeus? You bringing a Zeus's son, man? So the land comes to take away the sin of the world because that's Aries. It rides on the horizon and it's with comes with healing in its wings and the sunshine and the Zeus's son comes with healing in his wings. He has to do this, y'all. He has to do this because he knows too much to connect this Jesus is Zeus with Zeus. He has to. When you're digging in the right places, you have to. You know, come up with what you got. So the only thing he could do is make Zeus good. Because these people, these hijacks, these Gentiles still worship Jupiter. They still worship Zeus and they're proud of it. So they're going to call this Jesus is God character, this sun God character, this Aries, Zeus, Amun-Ra, Osiris, Mithras character. They're going to have to put all this together. That's syncretinizing. We're separating it. We're cutting off the hijack. This is, you know what I'm saying, our alchemy. We're, we're getting out, we're purifying ourselves of these bullshit stories to connect to the indigenous truth. The brightness of the day and love and goodness and prosperity. See, this is the kingdom of heaven. And who rules up there in heaven? Oh, man. Well, the bull, Taurus. Who is this bull? See, in Christianity, we're, we're deceived into thinking that somehow we're supposed to worship this God, Jehovah. But All right. <laughs> All right. So he's going to go against the Creator, and he's going to give you an excellent new tool. We're deceived that we're supposed to worship the Creator, who they're going to call Jehovah, right? Or Hawa, right? But look how he, look at the energy, look at this Christus Jesus energy that attacks the creator. It's attacking the Old Testament. It's attacking. It's calling it old It's attacking all your laws. This is what the God of war does, right? Could we just read it when we said who's this Aries? Aries is the Greek God of war So they come with war listen to his war chant his, his nemesis, the bull god, right? He was a, a god who demanded the sacrifice of children. So he's an evil god, and Jehovah is such a good god. Well, the schizophrenia here is that Jehovah himself wanted people to sacrifice their children. He demanded... Stop it. Hawa wants us to sacrifice our children. Now, this is when the false witness stuff, you know, starts to really rise up. Hawa wants us to sacrifice our children. Why? Because of Isaac and Abraham situation. And even then, no sacrifice went down. But it could have went down. So therefore, Hawa wants us to sacrifice our children. Man, did Abraham sacrifice his child? So let's get over our high horse and our pompous ass. So the only thing he can do to compare this bull with that bull is say, but Hawa wanted uh, uh, Isaac or uh, Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. <laughs> he's going to bring up the bull and then he's going to give you a bullshit story. Jehovah himself wanted people to sacrifice their children. He demanded Abraham. Go back. God, Jehovah. But his his nemesis, the bull god, right? He was a... So the bull god, he's going to try to make him look good. Check this out. A god who demanded the sacrifice of children. So he's an evil god and Jehovah is such a good god. Well... <laughs> so he's evil and Jehovah is such a good god. Wow. Right in your face, man. So this bull, this Moloch, is good. 
or he's not that bad because of this story that Hawa uh, asked Abraham to, you know, use Isaac as a sacrifice, which never happened. It was just a test, not a real thing. The schizophrenia here is that Jehovah himself wanted people to sacrifice their children. He demanded Abraham sacrifice his child. So let's... So sacrifice children and Abraham sacrificing his child. One is a plural, one's a singular. So he uses one singular example, man. I'm just I'm just clarifying, man, how, how cold, man, how cold the hijack could be when trying to, you know, bring up these false entities. Oh, the bull god is good, Zeus is good, Ares is good, oh Jehovah wanted wanted to sacrifice Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. He must be as bad as anybody else. So let's get off our high horse, right? Wow. Let's get over our high horse and our pompous <laughs> attitude and, and thinking that somehow Man. our God's moral. It was this God, Jehovah, that commanded genocide upon entire peoples. Nation. Genocide upon a tire. But he, he, he don't want to talk about the genocide on the Native Americans that he just said are Israelites. But he skips over all that genocide. That's what hijacks do. They skip, skip over all that genocide and then say, oh, but he, he, he wanted to genocide uh, the Israelites or, or the Israelites of genocide, these Canaanites or these other energies that were tied together, that were literally connected with these straight hijack frequencies such as these giants and such as these other, you know what I'm saying, abominations. And that in order to get these abominations on your land, you had to go to war with them and clear them off your land. Or the abomination still stands on your land. And since we didn't clear off all the abomination, we ended up making treaties with certain abomination. Here we are today. But get over your high horse. Oh, the Most High wants genocide and wants you to sacrifice children. Is that true? Or are you at war against other tribes and your power, your tribe, has a certain ancient love song or creator that is against the hijack, and the hijack is against the creator, and you're getting it firsthand that this hijack is against the creator and wants you to rock with the bull guy and Ares and Zeus. Listen up. And who taught our hands for warfare is why we're still to this very day going around murdering and, and going to war with every nation that we can figure. That's why we no, not we, they. See, we the Israelites are not going to war with every nation. You are, sir. You are, man. Hijack City. Most High preparing our hands for war. You getting that from David? He prepares my hands for war. It's because David's at war against certified abominations and certified hijacks linking back to Atlantis. So yes, you're at war. It's a frequency war. It's a war between the what? Ancient love song and excellent new tune. And if you're rocking your ancient love song, you are at war against this excellent new tune. So your hands better be prepared for war. You better be suited up. I think that's the smart play. But does that mean that the creator is bad because his ancient love song is now being hijacked by an excellent new tune? And the only way to tune it back into the ancient love song is to go head up to destroy it. No, we should let it rock. We should let the excellent new tune do its thing. I mean, this is Hijack City. We have prisons because, you know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That was his law. And we still can't get over it. You put your hand on the Bible every time you go into a courtroom because it's based upon this law of an eye for an eye. He said, well, that's a moral law, Dave. That's a good thing. What does the hijack have against eye for an eye? Is that if you say eye for an eye, you're going to be plucking out a lot of eyes of these hijacks. So they go against your laws. They go against eye for an eye because they don't want you rocking with eye for an eye. They want Jesus turning his other cheek. This is psychotherapy, man. This is brainwashing. This is hoodwinking. This is bamboozle. Well, Christ didn't seem to think so. Christ said that it was a curse and a bondage and he came to do away with the law. And did Christ say he came to do away with the law? I'm going to let y'all dig on this. Because y'all know, you know, you, I'm sure you know better. Or did he say, I came not to remove one title, one tip, one tittle, one title. I, I came to remove nothing from the law of the prophets. You see how this liar hijack just said what he just said? I, I even got to defend this damn. <laughs> I, I even got to defend this Christos on this one. 
Because this hijack is going crazy now. Oh, genocide. Most high wants you to murder your children. <laughs> Christ said, I came to destroy the law. Is that what he said? You go into a courtroom because it's based upon this law of an eye for an eye. He said, well, that's a moral law, Dave. That's a good thing. Well, Christ didn't seem to think so. Christ said that it was a curse and a bondage and he came to do away with the law and to give us freedom hmm. and liberty. South Where is that? Please show me that quote. Let's go. A little bit like our Constitution, justice and freedom and liberty for all. But, you know, so thank goodness today we don't stone prostitutes or cut people's hands off for stealing. But instead, we're still thinking somehow or another we got to punish these people and put them in prison because we're going to be the judge. We've got to make things moral. And who's in the prisons? The Israelites. Let's go. Well, Jesus said, don't judge because what you judge to others will be judged back unto you. That's called karma. And so when the sun comes up, man, the light shines and righteousness begins to, to be revealed. And that's what we want to believe in is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said his father was from above, but the God of the Jews was from beneath. And he's talking about the beneath. He's just, he's just lying, man. I mean, it's false witness after false witness. Jesus said, my God is from above, and the God of, of the Israelites are, is from beneath. But he ain't giving you no script on that, right? All right, let's go. If that all the other nations and kingdoms and peoples always talked about. The beneath is hell. The beneath is the abyss. And the abyss is at the bottom of the wheel of astrology. It's a cosmology. They understood the sun. I mean, you know, hold on right quick, man. Jesus. Law. Came up on the horizon. And Hold the sun would, would. Hold up, man. Oh, we were trying to hijack my net. Trying to hijack my net. It's getting too good. <laughs> Oh, I got my internet hijacked now. They ain't even gonna let me search. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. As soon as you start getting on these hijacks, man. As soon as you start getting on these hijacks, man. Oh, man. I ain't gonna do no part three. I'm just gonna say it like this. You see the connection that's being made. And we even get to the part where he's telling you, you know, all the drop that's connected between Zeus and and Jesus and how you should pretty much just like that bull situation be looking at Zeus to be rising up and all this stuff like that man I, I gotta reboot my net you know what I mean oh man I really want to get the rest of this man and ah, I might have to do a part three just but that's the you know I hate doing a part three just for this guy you know I hate doing it you know, just for this guy but I'm gonna leave the link so you can dig on the rest of this this is at the 39 minute you know what I mean? I started about halfway, so you can get the whole thing, or you can get the last, like, ten minutes or so, where this cat is literally, you know, putting all this Zeus together with who this, who, who, who this God is, you know what I mean? You know, trying to crap on, crap on the real, you know, say that Hawa wants you to kill your children, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, Jesus said that Hawa is from hell, you know what I'm saying? None of this shit. Is actually making no sense. Uh, Jesus came to destroy the law. Jesus came for all the nations. All these things are not in scripture whatsoever, whether you're talking old or new. You know what I mean? So, obviously, you're dealing with Hijack City, but this Hijack City has connected a few things that is very prevalent. Whether you're talking about this Aries, whether you're talking about Zeus, which again is all connected here as well, when you're talking all this. And we just get this last part here. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the supreme deity Zeus. That's all he's going to connect. Aries, right? The 
The pagans of Greece and Rome had worshipped Zeus as the supreme deity. Their savior was Zeus. So now they were eager to accept Jesus as a Zeus or Jesus as their savior. And that's in the origin of Christianity by A.B. Triana. Let's get this one. Our translated scripture says that Jawah's son name is Jesus, a compound word of I.E. and Zeus. The Messiah's true name, Joshua, was replaced by is Zeus, now known as Jesus. All right, all right. The Hebrews called their coming Savior the Messiah, Joshua. The disciples of the Savior accepted him as such, and to them, he was known as Joshua, the Messiah. The Greeks, however, rejected the Hebrew name and called him Jesus, Jesus instead. All right, same author. The plan of the Greeks was simple. They merely dropped the Hebrew terminology of names, which referred to the Hebrew deity and substituted the name or letters referring to the name of the supreme deity, Zeus. That's from Faith Magazine, Volume 69. Let's get one more. It has been all along well enough known that the Greeks occasionally worshipped the supreme deity under the title Zeus the Savior. That's in the two Babylons, Dr. Alexander Hissop. So this bearded situation is what they really are digging on. Alright. Toss away your excuses for hanging on to the Jesus era. Jehovah, who he, he's saying is coming from hell. <laughs> Hawa is determined that all those requesting salvation from Christ must address him in an honorable way. Salvation from Christ. So again, Isaiah 43. Let's just get that for the dismount. You know, my, my busy man. This actually happens every time every time I upload a video now. So this has been going on for a few months. You know what I mean? They try to slow us down. Whenever I upload a video, they cut my entire internet out and I gotta reboot it. And you know, then I gotta do it about eight, nine, ten times before the video is done uploading on YouTube. So right now I got part one. I just went right into part two. So part one is uploading and therefore they cut my internet off. Now I never understood the connection between uploading on YouTube and cutting off my Wi-Fi internet. You know what I'm saying? So something, some type of algorithm has been put in place just to slow us down, slow down the classroom, but we know that we come and we move uh, like giants. You dig? We, we take big steps around here, so that doesn't slow us down, not even a little bit. So that's all that's going on. Oh, man, I was, you know, matter of fact, let me dig on. I'm going to go right into the Tanakh, man, and we're going to fall back. We're going to fall back. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. You know what I mean? It's all good. You know, remember, man, <laughs> David is walking on water. Which way did he go? I don't know. He said, my own wisdom, my own subtlety has freed me. Your own wisdom has to free you, my people. Your own subtlety has to free you. Subtility is what? Still got that up. Oh, it's your discernment, man. Your discernment. So your own wisdom and your own discernment. You have to use wisdom and discernment when you dig on these Hamashiachs, when you dig on this script, new and old. But there's only one reason you're calling it old. It's because you're in the new tomb. If you weren't in the new tomb, if you weren't invaded, you would never call it old. It would be relevant. And that's the difference when they put the old title on there. Let's get Isaiah 43. We're going to get our dismount right here. Because all they do when they cut our internet off is, is make us, you know, hey, dig in real time. Make us pull it out. Now, this is Hawa, who he's saying is from hell, who he's saying his laws are being destroyed by Jesus. Well, Zeus is doing that. He's the god of war, right? And now, thus says Hawa, your creator, O Jacob, the one who fashioned you, O Israel. He's saying they threw Israel away, right? Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I mean, my people, they're trying to tell us that Israel's been thrown away. They're trying to tell us that there ain't no more Israel. And what's Hawa telling us in Isaiah 43? 
Let's get it for the dismount. Your creator, O Jacob, the one who fashioned you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the water, I am with you through rivers. They would not wash you away. When you walk through fire, you would not be singed, and no flame will burn you, for I am Hawa, your power, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. So now they got a blessed new Savior, right? It says, our blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune. Verse 3, Isaiah 43, for I am Hawa, your power, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom and Cush and Seba in your place because you were precious in my eyes and you honored and I loved you. And I put people in your place and regimens in place of your soul, regimes in place of your soul. Fear not, for I am with, with you. From the east I will bring your offspring, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them over, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth. Ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I have created for my glory. So who created the hijack? Because Hawa created you, which is why the creator is tribal. He rocks with his tribe that he created for his glory. Framer and shaper, whom I have fashioned, even perfected to liberate the people who are blind. No, Jesus came to liberate us and make us free. No, I created you to liberate the people. I created Israel to liberate the people who are blind. That they have eyes and death, though they have ears. Man, let's get it from right here, man. We're just talking Isaiah. Where all the nations gathered together and all the regimes assembled, whom among them could have declared this and let us hear the earthly prophecies, let them bring their witnesses and they be vindicated or else let them hear me and then say it is true you are my witness the word of Hawa and my servant whom I have chosen so that you will know and believe in me and understand that I am he but before me nothing was created by a God nor will there be after me I only I am Hawa and there is no deliverer aside from me in the New Testament, they say, call on my name, call on my name only, call on Jesus only, call on my name only, call on my name. I got the power under heaven and earth, Matthew 28. That don't jive with what the creator is really rocking with. We're talking about the frame of the shaper. We're talking about the power of the Old Testament. I mean, that's what Domenico de Vicio said, right? This is the power of the Old Testament. Domenico de Fiso used their cliche names to refer to the power of the Old Testament. Why? Because I, only I, am Hawa, and there is no deliverer aside from me. So that you know and believe in me and understand that I am he. Before me, nothing was created by a God, nor will there be after me. I have foretold and brought salvation and informed you. There was no strange God in your midst. You are my witnesses, the word of Hawa, and I am your God, your power. Even before there was a day, I was he, and there was none. There is none who can save from my hand when I act, who can reverse it. I, only I, am your savior. My people, my people, my loved ones, my real ones, only the creator is going to save you and give you the clarity of the ancient love song. And the only salvation we need is from the hijack and whatever new tune they brought. Because remember, Ethiopians, remember, my Nagas, as black as you are, you are the sons and daughters of the first Adam. The brothers and sisters of the last Adam and the offspring of Hawa 
personally and you shall be treated with the respect agreeable. Allow Hawa the Wada for digging on it. You know what I mean? We're right here, man, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, building and rebuilding, brick by brick. Stay up, suit up, choose up.